Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, we have our amazing lender Casey here. And today we're gonna dive into part two of our vet loans and kind of like the more specifics and maybe kind of like the FAQs that you guys would have generally um, about the VA loans that we didn't dive into um, our first part of the loan. So I'm gonna go ahead and just um, pass it forward to Casey and then we'll just go ahead and get started. Perfect. I. Uh... Appreciate you guys having me on the channel, adding in my license number in there. So make sure everybody has that. Uh, again, Casey Carpenter, Finance of America Mortgage and also a military veteran. And yeah, this part two, we just kind of wanted to go into those deeper questions that probably some of our VA clients have and kind of roll through that. Um, some of this stuff is a little bit more higher, higher level questions. And so, you know, like Christelle said, it could be the stuff you guys are thinking about and we wanted to answer it for you. All right then, thank you, Casey. Always happy to have you on here with us. So we're just gonna go ahead and just dive right in. So the first question that we have for you guys today is what type of property can you purchase with the VA home loan? Yeah, and this is kind of a repeat question from our last video that we did, but uh, just so everyone is aware that VA home loan has to be used for a primary residence only. That can be one to four units. Um, it cannot be used initially to purchase a investment property or a second home. It's got to be a primary residence that you're buying. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Casey. Um, and then the next question is, and I feel like with this, you know, a lot of, you know, my family's in the military, so they move around a lot. Um, so this question is, what happens to my house if I need to move again? Can I keep the house even if no one's living in it? So it's no longer a primary living space and what do you do with that home? Yeah, uh, great question. Basically one, you need to decide if, if you're going to keep that home or not. Do you need to sell that home for qualifying? Do you not need to? So let's just say you don't and, you, and you're gonna keep that home. Uh, then that home, uh, will stay there, but you'll be new, buying a new primary residence. What happens then is that home's going to be just converted to either an investment property or depending on where you're moving to, as far as distance and location and area, that home could be considered a second home. Right. But the, yeah, but the thing is that um, VA home loan stays attached to that property until it is paid off. And so you would be buying a new home with a different type of loan other than the VA loan, uh, because that VA loan would stay on that property that you're departing until it's paid in full. So you could actually either one, if you did sell that property that pays off that VA home loan, and mm -hmm. then you could use that to buy your new primary residence, or you could choose to refinance that loan into a different loan and then that would pay off and free up your VA home loan and you could use that to buy the new property and what's happening is that VA loan has to be paid in full to restore your entitlement and eligibility to use the VA loan again. Um, thanks for sharing that, Casey. And I feel like, honestly, you guys, one of the best things about working with a lender and just partnering up with one and talking to one is that you really learn so much about your different options that you do have. Like, you know, learning about that you can have the VA home loan, but then you can switch to refinancing it to a conventional and using the VA home loan again for the new, new purchase. Right, Casey? Yep, absolutely. But, yeah, so that's why it's always so good to like talk with a lender and just kind of get more details. So you really kind of know like what your options are. And with so many loans out there, it's just nice to be with someone who's so knowledgeable about all the different loans out there. Yeah, and we touched on it last the video, guys, too. Is, and that's, that's the one kind of myth out there, right? People think mm -hmm. you can only use the VA home loan once. You know, you can use it multiple, multiple times. It just has to be paid in full and restored before you can use it again. Mm -hmm, definitely. So many different options, you guys. Okay. So the next question is, do some loans need to be approved by the Department of Veteran Affairs? And what does that mean? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and the answer is yes. There are some loans that do need to be approved by the VA themselves. And what that means is that loan actually gets sent to the closest VA regional loan center for us here on the West Coast that's located in Denver, Colorado. So that lender would send that whole loan package over to them, the VA, and they're going to review that loan 
and make that final approval decision on that loan to make sure it fits in all their guidelines and stuff that they need to see for the VA. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. <clears throat> Throw problems again, I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, okay, so we just covered, um, do some loans need to be approved by Department of Veteran Affairs? And now what type of VA loans require approval, approval by the Department of Veteran Affairs? So this is any loan out there where a veteran and a non-veteran, non-spouse is mm -hmm. doing that VA loan together. So that is someone that's, you know, a veteran buying with their friend who's not a veteran or a family member who's not a veteran or someone that's not a spouse. So like a fiance or that, that type of nature. Um, and then a loan, also another one is a loan with one or more veterans on that loan. So let's say two veterans buy or three veterans oh, buy together. Okay. That has to be approved as well. And what's happening there is the VA is only going to guarantee the veterans portion of the loan. Um, so if it's a veteran and a non-veteran, non-spouse, they're only going to uh, guarantee that veterans portion of the loan. If there's multiple veterans, that means they're using multiple entitlements and they need to make sure those are being adjusted correctly and, and percentaged out per how many veterans are combining on that loan together. Yeah, definitely. So basically, um, it's anyone that you're buying with that's not your legal spouse through the military, right? Yep, not the legal spouse and not a veteran or military member. Awesome. So, you know, our first video, we talked about that the VA loan doesn't have a down payment. So the next question would be, are there some VA loans that require a down payment? Yes. And this kind of rolls into this question we just went through. Um, when you have a veteran and a non-veteran or non-spouse buying a home together, uh, that loan, again, got, it needs to be sent to the VA Regional Loan Center. And they're going to only guarantee the, the VA or the veterans portion of that loan or the military members portion of that loan. And what, what happens is you typically see a down payment required. The VA is gonna determine this, but mm -hmm. in most cases, if it's a veteran and a, and a single non-veteran or single non-spouse, you typically see this around 12 and a half percent down payment required. Um, again, because the VA is only gonna guarantee the veterans portion. Uh, and they determine that down payment. And so it's not always just that guaranteed 12 and a half. It all depends on that type of loan, how many people are on it, who's the vets, non, who's the non-vets, and mm -hmm. they determine the percentage based off of that. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of my, my military family, my family members, my brothers, a lot of them got engaged while they were going through, you know, basic and all that good stuff. Um, so it really leads on to our next question is, can a veteran purchase a home with a fiance and what is required? Yes, the veteran can purchase a home with their fiance, uh, but this does kind of fall back into that non-veteran, non-spouse uh, criteria still. Mm -hmm. So that loan again needs to be sent to that VA regional loan center for approval. Um, and they would determine, you know, down payment required because that is a fiance, it's not a spouse. But if that veteran or military member and their fiance were to marry prior to closing, that does not then need to be sent to the VA for approval uh, because now they are considered a spouse and then they could just um, use that 0% down availability option if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I know me and Casey, we kind of talked a little bit um, before we start recording is that when you do already have a huge down payment down, like let's say the 20%, then maybe just makes sense that you, if you guys still want to just be engaged, you can do that. But otherwise, you know, sometimes it is nice to just, you know, cut the extra stuff out and then just be legally married before, um, you know, moving forward, just so if you to have the no down payment, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, that is an additional step outside of your normal transaction time frame. Mm -hmm. And that is a full loan package that has to be FedEx basically delivered to that VA regional center. And for us again, West Coast, that's Denver. Mm -hmm. And so 
imagine them, you know, we're putting it in the mail, getting it over to them, they're receiving it, they're going to review it and send it back. That could be an extra week process in your home loan transaction. So it's definitely something you want to think about or be prepared for as you're getting ready to purchase. Definitely. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Okay. So I know with a lot of military members, like you guys just move around so much. So I found that this next question was like really helpful. Is that do I need to be stationed for a certain amount of time at a location in order to buy a house? Yeah, this is a really good question because as you're right, uh, military members move around a lot. And I want to say duty stations change every four years. That was back when I was in the service, which has been a little bit. So don't don't completely quote me on that. Um, but as the basics, you know, just for for any VA loan out there, number one is you need to have at least your two year work profession or military profession already established. So you need to have been in the service already for two solid years before you can use that VA home loan. And then though. Um, if you're going to change duty stations, yes, you, you can absolutely still use your VA home loan. You just need to not have your contract terminating within 12 months. So we got to see that you, you're going to be continuing for 12 months at least. Mm -hmm. and, and that would allow you to change duty stations or change locations just in general. Um, the way you would show that is you would show your new your new orders of either re-enlistment or extension. And we're just going to make sure that that's longer than 12 months. If you're getting out of the service, that still works as well. We could show the new civilian employment offer letter that you have um, and, and use that. Let's just say you're, you know, getting out like I did in San Diego and moving back to Oregon. Uh, you would just show that kind of set up your new civilian job that you're going to go into. When's the start date? Does it match up with your work profession? Those kind of things. Mm -hmm. The other thing would be if you're retiring, um, we would show military retirement and that, and that can be used as well. So you can absolutely move around. Um, there's just a couple of things we need to guarantee. And the biggest thing is stable income going forward past 12 months. You know, just a really off question real quick. Was it our last video where we talked about aliens? The United States Space Force, I think we yeah. talked about it. Yeah, at, you know, you never know. The Navy, you know, <laughs> does, does the sea, the uh, Army and Marines are, are doing land, Air Force does the sky, and now we got the astronaut space. military people. I'm not even sure what they're called yet. Uh, you know, going to be patrolling space. So look so out, aliens. I was playing, have you played Halo before? Oh, yeah. Were you shooting aliens? I was playing that last night. I was like, huh, I'm just not thinking about it. <laughs> it's kind of funny because honestly, yeah. I was in 2007, 2011, and, uh, yeah. you know, it's kind of the time frame when that was coming out in a popular video game. So there's a lot of military members that were really? playing Halo and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Back to, okay. So our very last question, you guys, we're wrapping it up here. Um, it's nice. I feel like a lot of times um, I, I, I talked to Casey about it, but I feel like my brothers who went to military, I feel like they really, they got a really great start in life. You know, they got a house, they got married, um, they got the allowances for like food, clothing, and I, I love it. And they also got like schooling and stuff, which was great. So this next question is, can I use my housing allowance, my BAH for my VA home loan? Yep. So military housing allowance is allowed. Uh, it's permitted as qualifying income. The lender just needs to verify that that's showing up on their pay stubs. If they're going to change duty stations, we need to verify um, what that new BH will be in the new duty station because that is location specific. Different areas cost more, so you're given a little bit more. Um, some areas cost less, so you're given a little bit less. So you need to verify you know, that what that BH is. And then it is a non-taxable uh, income. So that lender um, can gross that income up 125%. Mm -hmm. That does go for your housing allowance. That also is the same criteria for like clothing allowance and stuff like that, that you might receive. As far as uh, education allowances go, um, typically those aren't allowed to be used because there's 
no real way to prove that that's going to continue for at least three years and beyond. As we all know, education does come to an end point at some point. You finish that degree, uh, VA uh, home or VA educational benefits do have a time frame on that. Um, as far as usually it's about 36 months or depending on the cost of the college or where you're going, you know, yeah. calculates into that, there's a certain amount of money given. So the education ones, for the most part, unfortunately, are not able to use as qualifying income because you just can't prove that that income is going to continue beyond, you know, usually about a three-year period. I think the the biggest one, the nicest one, is like your housing allowance, right? Which you which we can use um, for the for qualifying for the mortgage. Yeah, and it's a great allowance too. I mean, you know, oh, like yeah. I said, different areas give you. Uh, certain amounts, you know, and I know some of the West Coast areas are, are really high on that BAH. So that's a good chunk of money to be able to use. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have family that lives in New Jersey. They have a house there, a family in San Diego. Yeah, my little brother's in San Diego. He has a house there. I'm like, oh man, it's crazy expensive, like how expensive houses are in those areas. So it's like so nice that they, the military has those homes for them and they get that housing allowance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, you guys, that's basically it. Just a really quick um, VA loan part two recap for you guys. But thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you, Casey, for always sharing your amazing knowledge with us. But um, I'll, like, again, we'll have this information down um, with his license number. Feel free to um, shoot him a text, call him, email him. Um, Casey, why don't you go ahead and share like where you're licensed? Yeah, yeah. And again, thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Make sure, uh, like Chriselle said, go down, like, and subscribe to her channel. Um, but I am licensed specifically in Oregon, Washington, California, Idaho, Florida, Virginia, and working on a couple other states now. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Casey. And thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, if you guys have any questions, again, um, the info box is down below. But otherwise, we'll see you guys again. Bye.